Okay, so welcome to the next lecture on the next module on uh, VLSI testing part of this NPTEL course. So, until now what we are discussing, we are uh, talking mainly about uh, different type of fault models applied to sequential circuits, then com sorry combinational circuits, sequential circuits, how to generate efficient test patterns and all those things. So, but actually if you want to club all these things, we can coin one term that is called actually offline testing. So, we can call it as offline testing. So, in this what happened? So, you had a circuit. So, you applied some test pattern through an ATE and this golden response response was compared. Okay, so, the I mean uh, that is like on the, the uh, all the efforts to so whatever test patterns you want to apply. So, that has to be determined. So, for that we have found out several algorithms like the algorithms. Then we have found uh, for sequential circuit we use uh, what do you call this. Uh, time frame expansion method and sometimes we have used the algorithm along with design for testability scheme called the scan chain and also so we have also seen how random test patterns generation can be helped to find out these test patterns. But as a whole what was the idea? The basic idea was that the chip will be fabricated, you will put some all these test patterns match the golden response and your job is done and you sell off in the market. But this, this assumption you can take I mean if you are working say around say 90s or uh, pre, pre 90s kind of a thing. But as our technology or as our I mean um, uh, integration technology is becoming sophisticated and more sophisticated, we are going to dip some micron designs. So, the main another problem that arise is that once you manufacture your new chip, you sell it to the market, you cannot guarantee that the chip will be ok throughout its lifetime or the expected lifetime. That means what some of the faults may even develop when your circuit is in operation or it may easily develop after say one year or after some six months of operation. Now, your whatever your circuit is placed is extremely complex board. So, now if something does not work, then you have to debug that which part of the circuit is not working in a complex uh, system like a motherboard or you can say that the complex uh, motherboard of your uh, uh, what you call the laptop or your motherboard of your mobile. So, some one of the chip is not working, but on as a whole you are getting some of the malfunction. So, now it is very difficult for a person or an engineer to debug by looking at uh, by, extra, by tapping the external points and debugging and finding out exactly which chip is not working. Because such type of failures are very common in some micron designs that individually the chips are ok, they were did not have any faults when they were being fabricated then we sold it in the market. But after operating for some say 6 months, so that is within the lifetime, very well, well, well within the lifetime, there is some problems and then you have to debug. So, debug takes a lot of time because you have to find out exactly which chip is wrong, then you have to replace that chip. So, and then I mean and now the chip is already fabricated in the board. So, you cannot apply the test patterns and all these things. So, there is lot of problems in in situ testing. So, the next level of testing from offline, actually this is called offline already we discussed, all lectures till now are offline, then there is something called in situ. In situ that means your chip is already placed in the board and now you want to know whether still it is operating fine because that way is the only way you can debug your circuit if something is there problem in the system. So, now, but it is very difficult as it is already placed in your like this is your motherboard and your chip is already fabricated and fabricated and soldered over here. So, it is very difficult to apply test patterns and all this because it is very difficult to get access individually to the chip because it will be connected to some other parts of the chip. So, that will actually make your life very difficult. So, now what, what is the solution? So, what I you can do? So, uh, so that is the requirement of in situ testing is very much important. The important arise because of the in submicron these faults which can occur after even after fabrication and totally being tested to be fault free they can occur when this system is in operation or you have deployed it. So, on now on chip that is in situ testing is a requirement for all circuits nowadays. So, that means what that is actually called built in self test that is what we are going to see in today's lecture. So, what it says? So, uh, so, that means what the idea is here that we have to have some arrangement in the chip or in the board that can apply some test patterns and can analyze the response and tell that the circuit is this circuit is fine, that circuit is fine and so forth. In other words, so once your circuit has to be has been offline tested to be ok and fine using an ATE, you sell it to the market. Now, I put it on my motherboard or I put it in my system. Now, every time before my chip starts its operation that at least before you boot your computer or before you start your advanced mobile phones, every chip will test itself. So, obviously, that uh, testing part uh, what you call say that, that test testing cannot be as exhaustive as we are doing an ATE because ATE is a sophisticated memory with a huge memory, a sophisticated machine with a huge memory where you can I mean uh, from where you can apply your patterns and where you can also, uh, uh, compare your response very efficiently and fast. 
but obviously if you want to make a miniature version of the AT and you put it on chip so what happens every time your chip starts its operation you can test it partially or you can say that I can apply some very important test patterns and I can get an estimate whether that part that circuit is working fine or not. So the, the debug problem becomes very easy in this case like for example say there are 10 chips in your board and your circuit is not working fine then what you can do you can run built in surface that is actually in situ testing that is uh, you can say that a part of the test patterns already you have used for offline testing can now be applied from another circuit which is on chip that is a separate circuit which is used only for testing your circuit is test pattern application and response analysis. So obviously a sub part of your test patterns will be applied in all the chips before this they start their operation and in, in any one of the chip you will find that the chip is not working fine. So you can very easily pinpoint that this is the chip or these are the chips where there is a problem. So that can be very easily debugged and you can pinpoint because you do not have to because all the chips are soldered already put in the board. So, you cannot apply any external elements external tester. So, but again that is not required but because your test pattern application circuit and test pattern analysis circuits are already in the chip. Now you can uh, the chips uh, this this uh, on, on chip testers which is actually called built in self test that is called built in that is already built in this is, this is tester is built in the circuit. So that will re respond with saying that this circuit is not working fine or this chip is not working fine. So you can easily point point this that chip is not working fine you can eliminate that chip and put another chip. So your test time becomes very very simple and easy for a test engineer when he is doing testing on a board level or in a system level. So, that is what is the introduction to BIST. So, circuits when tested are shipped to the customers with the assumption they will not fail with the extracted lifetime. This was offline testing already discussed. But in modern ICs, this will may not hold because even during operation, the circuits may fail. To gather through this problem, we test every circuit before they start up and putting some circuits on chip. So, that is actually called built in self test. So, now we will come to the basic architecture of BIST, how it works, you see. So, this is actually your circuit with DFT, some may, maybe you can, this DFT can be scan chain chain etc. So, some DFT is there. Now, so some normal inputs if you apply, so there is the primary inputs of your circuit. So, these inputs will go via the mark. So, in test mode obviously this pin is selected that is mode equal to 0 normal mode. So, that will go to this operation and you will get primary output. So, this is you can think that this is the only small part of your circuit which is actually your normal circuit or the general, part, general circuit which is being used. Now, what happens? So, actually you can say that and in the other hand other blocks you can see that many other blocks, but that area is not very high. So, when we will discuss all that why the area is not high. So, this will actually consume 99 percent of the area the main circuit and all the other parts are very small in size uh, as we will see. So, now what happens now your size circuit is now this part is the 99 percent of area that is anyway we will see later. So, you see that this part of the chip is tested this part of the chip this part of the circuit is tested and verified fantastic fine and tested ok and it is sold in the market after offline testing. Now, it can happen that every time before you start your operation that every time you start so, it may have some faults or it may have some faults which is developed when the circuit is operated. Now, as all the circuits are fabricated in the chips in the board, so it is very difficult to debug where there is a problem. So, you have to do in situ testing that is even after deployment of your chips as the circuit in the boards you want to test them. So, how do you go about it? So, some extra circuits will be required to do that. So, one is actually called hardware test pattern generator. So, what is that? So, this will all actually contain your test patterns which you have determined using your D algorithm or your D algorithm is scan chain or random test pattern generation or time frame expansion whatever may be the case. So, this is a, these are the test patterns which have, you have already generated. Now, you have to observe that these test patterns are generally applied from an AT. AT is a huge expensive machine, big machine with a lot of memory and uh, it, it is very I mean powerful one in that sense. So, but now the, this is your main circuit and obviously say its area is say 100. 1000 unit you cannot have a 10,000 unit uh, uh, circuit to test it that is infeasible and people will not appreciate that. So, what you will have to do you can only have a test pattern whose order of area may be say 10 or 100 max uh, if it is 1000 it cannot be even order of 100 it area should be 10. So, what it approximately will do we will see that is actually some kind of a random test pattern generation and obviously it is very difficult to generate all the test patterns which an ATE can generate because of that memory constraint and other constraint. So, you can generate very important test patterns or in other you can say that we are going to test the circuit for a very few uh, most important patterns among the test patterns all generated by the algorithm or in other words you can another example can be some say test pattern 1 detects 10 faults, test pattern 2 detects 20 faults, test pattern 3 detects 1 fault and so on. So, you will only use those test patterns which detects more number of faults because you are limited by the memory and hardware requirement of the test pattern generated. So, you will say you use some percentage of the test patterns which you are using in the offline testing. So, now when your test mode is 1 then 
uh, this pattern will be applied to the circuit, but these are actually a subset of offline test patterns. So, these test patterns are actually subset of offline offline test patterns and this is not equal this is a subset ok. So, this is what you do it now what happens so a subset of them will be applied now there is now I will tell you there is a ROM. So, in the ROM what you store you store actually whatever is the golden response or the expected response from this for this test patterns. Now, if you, you can see that again this is on chip circuit. So, this area is 1000 unit we have seen the main circuit. So, we said that we give it 10 we give it 20 kind of thing compared we give it 20 this can be 10. So, I mean we can say that at max we can have 10 percent area overhead of the general circuit. So, including all other blocks this is say 1000 area overhead some unit then all other test controller this that for including everything you can apply only say 100 units of area. So, you can think that if I use uh, uh, I mean what you can say that for this uh, for 100 test patterns maybe there were 10,000 test patterns in the uh, for offline testing now you have got only 1000 you selected very good test patterns or efficient test pattern which takes more number of faults and you generate with the random pattern then in the ram this rom if you want to store the golden response corresponding to all these 1000 test patterns the rom size will be very very high. So, that you cannot do. So, exact response for this 1000 test patterns or whatever cannot be stored in the ROM. So, for whatever we do that we have something called a response compactor that is whatever response you get we do not directly use in the comparator we compress them. So, by compression there is something called aliasing which we will see in this lecture. So, aliasing means what? So, by compression it is a lossy compression that sometimes because of the compression you may lose the efficiency that is I mean if the compression was not there you could have detected the fault, but because the compression the, uh, the detection may not be there that is called uh, lossy or aliasing is there present in that, but you have to compress it because if you do not compress then the ROM size will be very very high and it is not possible because I mean if you are co corresponding to all the test patterns which were generated by the test pattern generator you uh, store the answer or you can call the rest golden response in the ROM, the ROM size will be very very high and you cannot do that. So, you have to compact it and then for the compact response for the compact you can have compact test pattern and output compact patterns you can have the response in the ROM and then you can compare with the output the, that is then compare and if this com matches then it is there we will see all this through examples and along with all this there is something called a test this there is something called a there is something called a test controller. So, now what is a test controller this uh, whenever the circuit will start its operation. So, you will say that start this. So, there will be some kind of a signal and what it will do it will make m equal to 1 because it will select this pattern it will ask it to generate the random patterns it will ask is to compact the responses as well as it will uh, then it will also allow it the compression will start. And whenever you say that uh, my beast is done, so you get the status and now the circuit is fine. So, you can go for the normal operation of the circuit. So, in that case you say that beast is off then controller will make m equal to 0, it will stop its operation deactivate it and uh, you will deactivate this it will also deactivate the ROM. Because one more thing you have to understand that whenever your circuit is doing operation. So, only this part of the circuit should be running unnecessarily this one this one this one should not do its operation or should not be in execution because then there will be a lot of power consumption. So, the test controller takes care of all this. So, whenever you want to do a best you make m equal to 1 this is connected uh, you start operating all this you start and get the result status once the best is done then the test control will make m equal to 1 and then uh, sorry m equal to 0 it will make. So, the normal input will go through and all other uh, parts of the circuit will be beast part will be made off ok. So, that is saving in this one. So, that is basically the beast architecture. So, but here one point you have to observe that somehow we have to make this ROM very small size and also the test parent generator very small size. Because I mean if, if, if you compare to an ATE, ATE also the hardware pattern generator and a ROM which actually analyzes the response. But it is a very big machine with lot of memory power. So, you, you cannot you may not be able may not limit the number of test patterns only the test pattern is limited by the test time because if you are using too many test patterns then your test time will be higher and so your ATE cost will increase. But I mean from the memory requirement size and all this that is not a much of a concern. But here is a very much concern because it is a circuit which is put on chip and if your main circuit is with some area restriction some 1000 unit of area is there nobody will allow you to use a best which is again again having 1000 area or equivalent area of the normal circuit. So, your uh, beast area over it should be very small say around 10 percent or 8 percent or 5 percent smaller the better area over it compared to the circuit. So, that is why it is very critical to design the which test patterns you have to apply and how you compact them. So, that is very important. So, that we will see slowly in our as we proceed to our lecture ok. So, now uh, 
So, let us I mean see whatever we discuss. So, there is actually we have discussed the hardware test pattern generator. So, in what happens? So, this the test pattern generates the patterns equal to sensitize the fault and propagate the effect to the output. That is the same test patterns which we are we have developed in D algorithm or uh, time frame expansion method or whatever you can call the random pattern generation. But in this case, the test pattern generator is not an equipment, it is a circuit, so its area is limited. That is why we can use only a part of them. So, storing and generating test pattern obtained by ATPD algorithm, uh, this one is not feasible. Like whatever we have done by AD algorithm or time frame expansion method cannot be directly applicable. Instead, a test pattern is basically generated is what that we will see today is basically a type of a register which generates random patterns. So, it is not a specific pattern generator like you can say that I require 0001 then 1110 then 0111 then 1111 these are the 4 patterns I require. Okay, so, uh, for that you build a circuit it is very difficult to do that because area, area overhead will be very high. So, in case what, what we do in this case we use something called a random test pattern generation register so it will generate all patterns randomly. So, you can use and so it is a very small area over as we will see it will start generating lots of random patterns. And now, what is our duty? Uh, the, our, our duty is that you can select that uh, uh, I mean you can put a seed and as we will see you can control the sequence of the random patterns. So, you can say that I uh, that is it will it, it will generate all random patterns say from uh, 0 to 2 to the power n minus 1 generally 0 is not generated we will see why is the case. So, uh, like say 1 1 1 1 1 2 to the power n minus 1 all patterns it will generate kind of a thing sorry uh, 0 0 0 0 1 2 to the power n all patterns it will generate. But whatever you require. So, you can uh, have the make the registers of this uh, random pattern generator in such a way. So, that your uh, I mean uh, whatever I mean you start generating there is something called a seed as we will see which will determine what is the sequence of patterns sequence of random patterns, but it can generate all pattern in between all 0 0 0 0 1 to 2 to the power n minus 1 that is 1 to 2 to the power n minus 1. So, I mean uh, and say you want sequence pattern 0 0 0 0 1 then 1 1 1 0 then 1 1 these are the 4 patterns you want. So, you can arrange in such a way. So, that in, in initial few runs you initial few iterations you will get all these uh, required three patterns and then the other random patterns will be generated, but that is not required for you. So, after this three or four steps when you get all the results all the patterns you can reset the circuit and then again you can restart it whenever you require. So, but you will see that the random pattern generator will not generate only the specific three or four patterns you require instead it will generate all random patterns from 1 to 2 to the power n minus 1. Now, we have our duty is that or you can generate the random pattern such a way. So, that whatever patterns you require occur initially before the un un undesired or which you do not require for the random pattern. So, once your all the required random patterns are generated you can reset your random pattern generator and stop the best kind of a thing that is the basic philosophy we will see with examples. We have also seen an input multiplexer. So, input multiplexer is nothing, but it actually normal input to the circuit when circuit is operational and test inputs pattern when beast is executed. The control of the multiplexer is a what you can call the test controller central test controller as we have already seen. So, it decides on the controller. So, output response compactor. So, the output response was a loss lossy compression as I already told you. Why do you call it a lossy compression? Because if you are using non compressed structure then for all the random patterns which you are using as test patterns the output response will have to be stored in a ROM. So, the output response I mean for all uh, will be very very high the large size of the ROM and as our we are very much restricted uh, what you can call the golden signature will be very large in that case if you are not compacting it, but similar to the trash pattern generation the output responses cannot be explicitly stored in a memory and responses cannot be compared because it will make the ROM size very very high. So, what we have to do? So, we have to compact it so that golden uh, golden signature signature itself becomes simpler in terms of area of the memory that stored the golden signatures. So, that is you compress it so that whatever you have to compare will be smaller in area size or in size. So, your ROM area will be less, but it is a lossy compression. So, sometimes we will find that we are actually losing some of the test coverage because of this compression, but still you have to go about it because you cannot have a, a legacy or you cannot have an ecstasy of using a huge area overhead in this case. Okay. The next element was a ROM, so which stores the res golden response to be compared. Again, the golden signature here in this case is the compacted signature. So, it is a comparator. So, comparator is a comparator circuit, it is a digital uh, bitwise comparator. So, it will compare the output response of this compressed output response of the circuit with the golden signature in the ROM. So, if it is equal, it will say yes. If there is a failure, it will say that it is a fault. And the test controller, test controller is the controller of the circuit. So, whenever the IC is powered on, if the BIS signal is made high. So, this BIS procedure is started. Once the BIS status is 
high or low but you know that if this, there is no fault in the circuit then you can connect the circuit to the normal input through the mask and your circuit will start its operation. But if you find out that there is a problem in your circuit then the BIS circuit will not allow your circuit to operate and it will ask it will give an, a message that this part of the circuit is not working in the motherboard that this chip, chip, chip is not working. So, you replace the chip and then all your circuit will start operating otherwise you cannot operate your system with a one chip faulty. So, that is another advantage of BIS that with one or two faulty chips your circuit your system will not start operating. So, that in the end or in the middle of some operation you get a malfunction and you may lose your data and so forth. So, it will not allow, allow your circuit or your system to boot up saying that this is a problem here you better recover it and replace the chip and then start the operation. So, that was about the basic BIST architecture okay, that, uh, and about the requirement and all this. So, now what we are going to see the there are two major parts of your circuit here one is your uh, BIST test pattern generator and another part is what another part is about your uh, is a response compactor. Because compactor is a digital circuit which you have already learned in a digital course. This controller is nothing but a controller circuit. It depends on um, based on requirements you have to generate some signal. So, it can be easily designed using digital circuit fundamentals and kind of map or pin McLaren's optimization. Compactor is the digital circuit. So, only two important parts which we do not know we have to learn in the testing module is the uh, test pattern generator, the random test pattern generation and the response compactor and alias. So, these are the only two modules which we will see other can be recollected or you can go back and look for your digital circuit fundamentals and you can do that. So, what is a random test pattern generator? So, what do you see? Say for example, if you have a circuit like this say, say it has n inputs and some outputs. So, and uh, we know that there is expected to be 2 n minus 1 kind of test patterns will be possible over here. So, we are just saying that 0 is not possible. We will see why 0 is not possible to be applied. So, let us assume that there are n test pat n pat n inputs and then the order of 2 to the power n minus 1 patterns can be possible. So, among them say you want k test patterns to be applied. Okay, so, and this k test patterns which you want to apply which you have determined by d algorithm or time frame expansion or whatever. So, this k test patterns has to be applied to analyze the circuit for failure in the best. Now, what you have to do if I generate a circuit which generates all these k patterns one by one the area will be very very large we will see with an example. But now, what we can do the other way is that there is something very much important area is the low area overhead. So, there is some circuit actually will see which takes very very less area overhead which actually called pseudo random pseudo exhaustive pattern generator. So, it generate at most almost all or you can say all patterns from actually 0 is not there means 0 is difficult to generate from 1 to 2 the power 1. If there are n flip flops in the register, if you have the pseudo random pattern generator register is there. So, if we can start from 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 and 2 to the power n minus 1, all patterns it will generate among them and there will be in a random fashion. So, that is actually called pseudo exhaustive and is also called random pattern because these patterns are generated in a random way depending on your initial seed. So, initial seed means you, you have load the register with some values other than all zeros, then after that you start generating the patterns in a random manner or actually people call it pseudo random because it will, I mean it, it will depend on the, I mean pure, there is nothing called pure random because you depend on the seed and the connections. So, you will generate a pseudo random patterns and among them pseudo random patterns the some of these some of these say pseudo random patterns are say 1, 2, 3, 4 something like this you will generate and among them your k patterns will obviously be there which you need to apply to this one. And if you want to apply this in a specific order like k 1, k 2, k 3, k 4 which are among those k test patterns to be applied you require a very sophisticated circuit like initial pattern is say 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 then 1, 1, 1, 1 then 0, 0, 0, 1, 0 something like this. So, if you want to generate these three patterns which are uh, your uh, test patterns for this. So, you know that you can implement it using a uh, you can optimize using a sequential circuit using a 3 bit uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 using a 4 bit register and some combinational circuits you can implement it. You have to this is your in, uh, first output then this is your next output then this is your next output. So, you can easily go for digital circuit design uh, with a state machine and these are the outputs you can do that. But then you know that you have to go for optimization of the gates and all. So, there will be some gates will be involved and the area will be very high if you have a 32 bit if n is actually 100, 200 you know. So, if you have such a high number of bits, okay, so your area overhead of this counter or what you call test pattern generator if you want to be deterministically will be very, very high. So, what we do is that we use a pseudo exhaustive random test pattern generator. So, it will generate all random patterns between this, but whatever you do you want to select this case k importance one from that. But now one important thing here is that so some somehow you will see uh, intelligently you can use the starting one so that your k inputs which are meaningful for you come as fast as possible. 
So, they are basically such type of registers are called linear feedback shift registers is almost commonly used for all detergent base because it satisfies two conditions. So, LFSR you should know the term that is called linear feedback shift register this is a feedback over here. So, they are used in case of BIS because they generate all possible ra all random pseudo random patterns all possible mean between 1 and 2 to the power n minus 1 it is pseudo random and it depends on the seed. So, by so by controlling the seed you can uh, I mean uh, make the register in such a way so that the patterns of importance occur first and then the patterns are necessary to us occurs. Okay, and there are basically two type of LFSRs we will study one by one. One is a standard LFSR and is a modular LFSR. So, we will see that, but we but basic idea is that they are very small in area and secondly what and secondly uh, what is the another advantage? The another advantage here is that it is a uh, the area over it will be very very small that is one thing and it will generate all possible patterns in a pseudo random fashion. So, you can take the whatever is required and that can be changed by using the seed. Okay. So, we will see one by one. So, there, there is two, two types and standard LFSR and modular LFSR linear feedback shift register. So, this is the standard LFSR. So, why we call it a linear feedback shift register because you can see there is lot of feedback. So, there is some feedbacks over here. Now, we will study that in a bit detail so that we can see what, what is basically happening. So, you see um, this is the, this is a, this is the register. So, there is having a D flip flops. We already told that D flip flops are generally used in this uh, in digital circuits. So, this is D and Q. So, this again D and Q and so forth. So, you can understand the connections. Now, now what, what you can see is that you uh, for uh, why you call it linear feedback shift register because this is again D and Q. So, the output of the last flip flop you can call 0 whatever x 0 this is connected to this one. Okay, so, this this all these pluses are nothing but XOR gates. So, a properly designed LFSR can generate a near exhaustive set of patterns. It can cycle through this one states except all zeros. A properly LFSR design is known as maximal length LFSR. We will come to that. Now, see what, what we are doing. So, what is the idea here? So, the output of the first flip flop or the last flip flop, not flip flop is connected to this one that is the feedback and you can and this is one H1, this is a switch actually, you can say switch or connection is there and connection not there, we will see about it. So, idea is that this Q is connected to one input of the two input XOR gate and the, the one before flip flop or the last flip flop before the X naught, it the other input is in this way. Then the output of this XOR gate will be the here, the output of the second last flip flop, this one will be connected to this one and so forth and the first flip flop will have this one. So, first flip flop output uh, input will be uh, having a feedback from itself as well as this can be the feedback from this one. Now, there is a very important thing over here. So, this is the generic generic architecture of a linear feedback shift register. Why you call a feedback? Because you see this output is depending on this feedback. This, uh, uh, this, this I mean uh, for this case this or the first input of the first flip flop in that one or x minus 1 depends on the feedback of all other flip flops. But for the other cases you see they are directly connected. This output will be here, then uh, this output will be here, this output will control the input of the next one. So, this output will control this flip flop, this output will directly control this flip flop dot 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 and so forth. But the input of the first flip flop will be determined by the feedback from all other flip flops. And you can see this is a linear feedback, so it is the name the linear feedback shift register. Now, it is not mandatory that you can see there are some h's are there h minus 1 minus 2 dot 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 h 1. So, they can be either 0 or 1. So, what do you say that if I say that h is equal to 1 that means what this this feedback this flip flop this a multiply I mean sorry this xor gate will be there and this thing will be there. But if it can also be the case that the, we do not require a feedback from this register or this register or this register. So, if we say that we do not require a feedback from this k x minus I mean what do you call this this x 1. Uh, uh, flip flop, then what we can do is that this thing will this will not be there h 1 equal be equal to 0. Okay, so, this is not there at all this feedback is directly connected to this one if you say that h 2 is equal to 1. So, your h 1, h 2, h 3, h 4 etcetera can be zeros and 1s. So, if it is a 1 then this feedback will be there from that flip flop and if it is a 0 then that feedback will not be used the other it will be a bypass of that one. So, by changing this h 1 h 1 h 0 h, h 1 h 2 h 3 to h n minus 1. So, making them 0 and 1 you will get different types of LFSRs. Okay, so, by and they will have some polynomial as we will see there is something called a characteristics polynomial for this one. So, whatever flip flop or whatever I am other way. So, by changing this h 1 h 2 h n this one I having different values of zeros and 1s. If it is 0 that means this XOR gate feedback is involved. If you say h 1 is 1 then this flip flop is used in the feedback. If it is 0 then this flip flop is not used in the feedback. So, this will be a direct connection over here and this thing is not there. So, by using this h values to be 0 and 1 you can 
get different configurations of this LFSRs. So, that is what they are saying a properly designed LFSR, properly designed means by using a proper values of x, h zeros and h this h values zeros and ones, you can generate a LFSR which will generate a near exhaustive or I can also say exhaustive test patterns as it can cycle from 2 to the power n minus 1 states 0 is not there. Such properly in SSR called a maximum length like that is what we require. So, what we require? So, we require some say k test patterns to be generated out of this. We will see how it generates. Okay, so, now we if you have if you choose properly the values, so then let us say there are n inputs. If you choose properly the values of this one, then you can generate 2 to the power n minus 1 to this n bit all these patterns 1 to 2 to the power n minus all these patterns can be generated in, this, uh, this near, in an exhaustive manner we call near exhaustive because 0 is not included and it will be in a random fashion. And depending on the first seed like you initialize your uh, registers in some values if you have a prop different I mean like you can start with say 0 0 0 1. So, this can be one starting point. So, we, this is called the seed. So, using different seeds you can get the different random and sequence of the patterns will change, but it will cycle through to the power n minus 1 to all zeros and so forth the, or you can say it will start start from your seed and it can circle the circling length is to the power n minus 1 ex ex excluding all zeros. Now, this is called the ex maximal length LFSR because it is a full cycle, but, but sometimes you do not may not require a full cycle stuff because you may re only require k important test patterns to be generated. So, using different configurations of these h 1 and h, h zeros, you can also go for a no, I mean what you call it may not be a maximal length LFSR. So, this cycle will be less than to the power n minus 1, it may will not generate all patterns in between. 1 to 2 to the power n minus 1. But generally what we do is that we use a, a maximal length LFSR because we want all patterns to be generated because we do not know which are the test patterns that may be required. So, what we do is that we require we generally use a maximal length LFSR and then we use a seed such way so that the important test patterns you require they occur first and then the unnecessarily test patterns will occur after those in the cycle. So, once all your important test patterns are generated you can reset your um, what you call this uh, linear feedback register. So, we will see this by an example. So, things will be more clear. And, uh, and and sometimes we want to you can you can if you, you can set this h ones and h zeros h one two three four all this if you can do it very carefully then you can have a uh, non exhaustive uh, non maximal length LFSR which you can design in such a way so that only the test patterns you require are generated by this so that is why it gives you lot of I mean flexibility and area over it you can see is nothing but only some XOR gates so and all these h one h will not be one actually some of them will be one and some of them will be zero so what is the area over it some flip flops as and only some of the XOR gates, nothing more than that. Why, why nothing more is there is required? Because uh, even only if you want a feedback from the particular uh, flip flop, then only the XOR gate is there, otherwise the area is not there because the XOR gate is not present. Now, this whole thing can be represented by a matrix. So, it is always generated by a matrix. So, what is there? So, you generate in a matrix we call x t plus 1, what is the value of the register in time t plus 1 is dependent on the time. Uh, present value of the matrix this matrix and the present input value. So, x t plus 1 is equal to T s into x t. So, this is your x of t that is the present value and this is your next value for all the flip flops and this is the characteristic matrix called T s. So, you see how it can be generated. So, you see, uh, so what is the idea? So, idea here is that So, idea here is that if you look it very ob observe it sorry if you observe it very carefully. So, what is the idea? The idea uh, output of x naught is dependent on the sorry uh, the out input of x naught is the output of x 1. Similarly, the output of x n minus x sorry you can say that uh, x 0 x 1 you can say x 2 the output of x 2 you can say is uh, controlling the input of x 1 and so forth. So, you see what I represent if I say that what is x 0 plus 1 t plus 1. So, what is x 0 t plus 1 will be actually equal to what is the output of x 0 t plus 1 will be the uh, input of so that, that is input d. So, the output of x t plus 1 will be equal to actually uh, x t this one. So, whatever the value here is will be in the uh, time period t plus 1 will be the what is is the value of d at time t. Now, what is the value of d at time t? It is the output of x 1 at time t. So, you can say that uh, x 0 of time t plus 1 is nothing but equal to x 1 value of time t because at time t uh, the output of x 1 is equal to the input of x 0 and at time t plus 1 this output will come here. So, this is the stuff. Similarly, it can be interpreted for all other except the first flip flop. The first flip flop depends on lot of feedbacks. So, that is why if I use the matrix. So, what it will find out? So, you, can, you have to observe that this is nothing but a 
diagonal matrix is there. So, this is uh, the first column only one bit is 1 all others are 0 this is the diagonal is only 1 and here you actually have to get the value of h 1 h 2 dot 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 h n minus 1 this, this is the h whether you want to have a feedback or you do not want to have a feedback. So, now what is the value of x naught t plus 1 you can easily see that is equal to 0 0 into 0 this is equal to 0 into x 0 t plus this one with this one that is 1 into x 1 of t plus some 0 into x 2 of t and dot 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 all will be 0. All these things will be eliminated and you will have only x naught t plus 1 is equal to a 1 in that is 1 you can eliminate this is x 1 t that is what is required these things are eliminated because of these zeros. Now, similarly you can easily see that if I want to find out what is the value of uh, uh, this x 1 the x 1 of t plus 1 that is this one. So, it is actually what? So, it is actually equal to this will, will be 0. So, it is a 0 factor this one will be multiplied by this one. So, it is a 0 factor. So, this one will be have to be multiplied by this one. So, it will be 1 into x 2 of t plus all zeros will be there. So, x naught t plus 1 is equal to the x t x 2 t that is what? So, the, what is the output of this value at t plus 1? So, x 1 t plus 1 it will be equal to what? It will be x 2 t because this value is coming here in the next clock class. So, similarly you can find out that for all this, this equation holds. Now, only you have to worry about the first flip flop because it comprises the feedback. So, that we have to see once. So, this is the last flip flop you can see over here. That you can see this is the last flip flop here. So, what is it dependent on? It is dependent on x naught Okay, and then plus if h 1 is there then only it will be h 1 if it is whatever will be the case right. So, that that, that x, x naught will be there this one x or with then x 1 of t kind of a thing right. So, x 1 sorry it will be what sorry it is the equation is something like this input is dependent on this output x or with this one if h 1 is a 1 similarly this output x or with this output if h 2 is a 0 similarly this one with x or with this one if this is 1 and so forth. If something is 0 that will not be comp that will not be considered. So, let us see then we again we will come back. So, x n minus 1 that is sorry x n that is last flip flop n minus 1 this t plus 1 this, this one is equal to what it is x naught t this one is there correct this, this one multiplied by this one plus h into x plus is nothing but x or. So, this one is h 1 into x 1 t plus h 2 into x 1 t dot 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 h n minus 1 then your x n minus 1 t. That means, what you see if somewhere x is 0 this h is 0 that it is not used in the feedback then this part will be gone it will be the only other way. Actually, just like looking at this circuit you can find that is the case. So, if even if uh, say we, we consider that all these things are 0 for this, this one is 0, this one is 0, this one is 0, we assume that. So, only this thing is there. So, what will be x n minus 1, x n minus 1, t 1, t plus 1, it will be nothing but x 0 of t, this we have to consider, okay. and it will be only this one is 1. So, it will be plus this is x or h 1 that is actually 1 now. So, you can eliminate this 1 now it is a 1. So, it is 1 dot x 1 of t. This is the case and all others are 0. So, this is the go, di, this will directly go and feedback over here, but if you want to use another over here. So, you have to again put another x or here. So, it will be again x 2 of t. So, wherever h is h this h value is equal to 1. So, you are using 1 1 more more one more x x or gate. So, actually this is actually a big this is a very big x or gate over connected over here and there are all the inputs coming through this one. So, whichever flip flop want to give a feedback to the first flip flop. So, that h has to be made a 1 and it will be com it will be included in the equation, but if you see if nobody wants to give the feedback then what happens then on but then the only the first feed this feedback this feedback will be only be there and all others will not be there. So, the output of the first flip flop will be actually x naught. 
So, only this will remain and all others will go. So, that is what is being reflected by this line. So, it is x naught x n minus 1 t plus 1 is equal to first will be that is why this is always kept at 1. So, whatever may be the case if nobody wants to give a feedback to the first flip flop actually last one that is x naught will have to give it. So, that will be there. So, x naught t will always be there and this part will depend on whether h 1 or h 2 has a 0s and 1s. So, if first one wants to give a feedback it will be 1. So, it will x plus are nothing but x source. So, h, h 1 is 1. So, it will be 1. So, it will be there. So, it, this will give a feedback. So, x naught t plus x 1 x or x 1 t. Then all others may not be liking to give a feedback. So, it will be all 0 and maybe this h n 1 minus 1 may want to give a feedback. So, it will be another x or then h 1 n minus 1 is 1. So, you will have x n minus 1 t. So, this is also going to give a feedback. So, this is how this, this matrix form also determines generates this or also represents this circuit. So, there are two, uh, two representations of your uh, what you can call your this uh, LFSR standard LFSR. Okay. So, now, so we are not going into this very depth theory we are not going to give this is a very uh, in depth theory which is available. So, we say that uh, then we can say just a minute. So, one more thing we will say that. So, they also it can be represented by a function, but if you have this we can have a function representation of this one. So, what do you how do you write it? So, we say that uh, f x is equal to 1 is always there and x n is always there. So, if you have this this are uh, so this is the fixed we will see how it we can easily develop see this how it happens. So, the LFS are there is a characteristics polynomial we will say that it is 1 and this x n minus n the last bit is x n. So, if it is the length of the flip flop is n. So, there is another factor involved that is x n and h 1 x plus h 2 x square plus dot dot h n x minus 1 and h s x minus 1 and so forth. So, whenever you are putting h is equal to 1. So, it is x factor will be there and or x square will be there and wherever it is not there h is 0 that factor will be not there. So, the same matrix we can also represent it by a uh, what you can call a characteristics polynomial. Then there are lot of theories. So, we will give the reference so that you can see that there is some reference to find out that if what is the characteristic polynomial which can this is the characteristic polynomial which is also defined which can be derived from this matrix. So, if then, then, then there is there are lot of theories which you can check that if given this characteristics polynomial there is some something called prime characteristics polynomial some some some, some I mean uh, quote unquote all these things are there. So, we are not going into depth on all the theory because it will take you to a very depth analysis of this polynomial functions and all those things or characteristic functions and all. So, I mean uh, so there is some relative prime terms are there and so many other exhaustive theories there which are not going into, but given this type of I mean uh, characteristics polynomial this theory which will tell you whether this uh, flip flop or whether this register is going to generate the exhaustive set of test patterns or not. That is whether it will cycle through 1 to 2 to the power n minus 1 or not. So, I mean if you have uh, if you uh, choose the values of h in such a way then you can find out that characteristic polynomial is such that it will generate all possible patterns from 2 to the power n minus 1 to 1 and so forth, but there are some if you choose the h s in different way. So, the characteristic polynomial will change and then you can determine that it is not going to generate the exhaustive uh, set of patterns uh, not cycle through exhaustive patterns. So, all those theories are there which can be easily determined by looking at the characteristics polynomial. So, uh, depending depending on your requirement you set the h s accordingly and then using the theory you can easily check whether it will uh, rotate through this uh, what you can call the exhaustive set of test patterns or not. So, I mean this is generally the English whatever I we discussed about the matrix. So, it is written that I mean uh, depending on h 1 and so forth the flip flop may provide a feedback or may not provide a feedback. So, that is what is the I explained about this matrix is written in text over there you can go through and but this is representation of the characteristics polynomial. So, I mean uh, so we are not going into the theory, but by using the theory and the characteristic polynomial you can easily find out whether I mean uh, what you can say whether it is uh, it will go through near exhaustive case or it will not go for the near exhaustive generation and so forth. So, we will uh, we will start with an example. So, because there are lot of theories involved in this LFSR. So, better we explain with an example. So, let us see this is a LFSR right. So, this is x 2 x 1 and x 0. So, this is there and you can see that this guy is not giving a feedback only this guy is that h 1 is in this case is 0 because h 1 is not giving a feedback, but x 0 is all, all must always give a feedback. So, you cannot do anything. So, uh, this is the feedback is there. So, only h 2 is 1 this guy is 0. So, no feedback is there. So, some person has designed an LFSR in this way. Now, what will be the matrix? So, you know that this is our case, this is a diagonal matrix. So, this is the case, this for this column the last bit will be 1. Why this last bit is 1? Because we always know that x 0 must give a feedback to the first flip flop. So, this has to be kept as a 1 because this uh, to generate x 2 this is multiplied by this factor, this factor is multiplied by this factor. So, always we are going to get what you call 
uh, uh, the feedback. Okay, so this uh, th this th this one is multiplied by this one. You always keep this as a one. So then this implies that x two uh, t plus one will be determined by x naught. This is the minimum thing that is required. Okay, so now so let us see. I mean how it represents. So this is your this thing. I mean a diagonal matrix. This is the one last bit is one and this is h 1 and this is h 2, h 1 is 0. So, you put a 0, h 2 is 1. So, we put a 1. So, you can easily see that uh, what is the case. So, x naught this uh, x naught t plus 1 is nothing but x 1 product of this one. So, x naught t plus 1 is nothing but x 1 t then uh, you can say that x 1 t this is nothing but this one multiplied by this one. So, x 1 is nothing but x 2. So, this is nothing but x 2 and in the final case that is this last one. So, this one is nothing but is equal to x naught t plus this is 0. So, this not be there x or with x 2 t that is what is you are getting x 2 t x or with x naught t. So, this only determine this one this is the case. Now, this is the matrix representation also we can go for the uh, what you can call uh, this one uh, this characteristic uh, what, you, uh, what do I say you also have to go for the characteristic polynomial base L base L F S R representation. So, this is the case. So, you know that the, the, this thing is there. So, 3 flip flops so x 3 x 3 cube will be there x 1 will be there. So, this one is x h 1 x 1 plus h 2 x square is there. So, h 1 is 0. So, this term is not there only this one remains and so this is this characteristic polynomial of this LFSR standard LFSR. Now, an important thing you have to tell that the theory is there. If you study this, you find out what is what is this type of a characteristic polynomial. So, it will tell you that this is the characteristic polynomial which can generate all exhaustive test pattern. So, that theory we are not going to do that because that be and there is also a list. I mean, uh, this if you look at the references, some standard references are already uploaded in this web course, I mean, in this course, you can see the site. So, there are some standard textbooks. So, the standard textbook will give an appendix or a list of characteristic polynomial which are exhaustive in nature. So, this type of characteristic polynomial lists are available which are proved to be in theory that will generate the exhaustive test patterns excepting all zeros of course. So, you can select appropriately as you want right. So, now we will go to the example. So, in this case uh, already that uh, x, uh, this one that is x this uh, 1 plus x square plus x cube is already known to be generating an exhaustive test pattern case. So, that you can easily go and find out that is in the list of the exhaustive uh, uh, ex uh, near exhaustive and accepting zeros all patterns it will generate. So, this characteristics is in that list of exhaustive test pattern exhaustive test pattern polynomial set. So, there is a list of uh, ex uh, I mean the characteristic polynomial in which the character is that it will generate all possible patterns. So, this one falls in that that can be found out in the list. So, it will it is expected to generate all possible patterns theory you can look over there. So, this is your matrix already we have seen. So, now what is requirement now we have to see that it works. Yes. So, what is this? I already was mentioning that you have to give a seed, well the seed cannot be all 0. So, you have to give a seed, seed means it is the starting point. So, starting point is the starting point is we are giving a 1 over here you can see x 0 is 1, x 1 is say we can say that it is 0 and it is a 1. So, you can set and you reset your flip flops accordingly because uh, mean by, by any many meaning means you can do that. So, it is done. So, you can also start with a 1 1 1 seed that is not a problem. So, any seed you can apply. So, this seed say for example, as I told you say for example, you, the for testing a circuit or so forth very important test patterns are say uh, this one. So, say 1 0 0 is important then you can say 0 1 1 is uh, sorry. So, important test patterns are say 0 0 1 uh, then uh, you can say that 1 0 0 the other way yeah, say important test patterns are 0 0 this one say 1 1 1. Okay, now, so what you will what is my duty? So, what I what I will see is that. So, if I start with this, so this is my start point this is seed. So, this is start point. So, if this is seed then first pat first clock cycle this pattern is generated one pattern is testing my fault. Next iteration I will get this very good. So, second pattern is done. Now, this third pattern is not of requirement not of not not my requirement because I mean one 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 one. So, th this will not test anything. So, this will go blank. Okay. Now, what happens? Now, this 1 1 1 is required and it is your 3 patterns are done. So, you can stop over here and when, whenever you require again again you can reset and come back. So, now there are 2 ways of doing it. So, once you can set the you can say, see the characteristic polynomial in such a way. So, that it generates only this pattern only this setup if it is possible. It may not be always possible that it will generate only these patterns in this sequence. Then you have to solve it in a deterministic manner as you do it for a combinational circuit. So, you can try out that you I want to design a sequential circuit which will generate this 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 and sorry this this and this that is only this this and this. 
So you will find out that it will take much more gates than a single XOR gate. It will be much, much higher. So you have to do it using a current of map optimization or a Queen Maclansky optimization. This is the current state. Then if you apply a one, then you go here and the next state will be here and so forth. Then you go for this um, minimization of uh, this is 1D, this is 1D, this is 2D, this is 3D. So three D flip flops are there. You have to optimize the input for all this. So the standard digital circuit design, the digital state machine design you can see. We always know that in digital design that the state machine designs are there. So you have to optimize this. So this will be much more higher than a single XOR gate. So if you go by that way, your circuit can design, uh, implement, uh, bring out this pattern, this pattern and this pattern. But it will take much more number of gates than required. So that is our constraint that we cannot have such a huge number of gates while we are generating a test pattern generator because of the beast area over it required restrictions. So what we are doing, instead we are using a, uh, this random pattern generator. So it is very simple as we will see, only one XOR gate is there and it is generating the near exhaustive test patterns, excepting the case of 000, zero, zero that cannot be generated here because if it is there, you will see that it will hang, it will always be in 000, zero, zero only, but all other side is generated and for that we require only one XOR gate. Our requirement is this one, this one and this one. So only we, so we start with this seed, okay, and only we have we get one beam in sequence based state, and all of us are very good for us. But if we start with this seed, then it's a problem because this is an important say, requirement. You can say this is an important pattern, but then again we have to get all these junk patterns there before we go back to this. One. So seed selection and characteristic polynomial selection is very very good, very very important. So if you sometimes can have if based on some requirement of your test patterns, you can easily find out another characteristic polynomial which will generate only these patterns and your job is done. So that is very good. But sometimes it may not be possible that way. Though in that case, what we do, we go for the exhaustive case and then we actually uh, put the seed in such a way so that the important patterns come first rather than the non-important patterns. So in this case, they have put the seed as 0, 0, 1. So you see what is the next one, so the next iteration what is going to do. So this x0 input will control this and this one will control this in the next time. So you know that uh, what is going to happen. So uh, means x1 will uh, get go to the value of this one, sorry, I wrote the wrong way. So x1 will control this x0 and x2 will control x1 in the next iteration and x0 with feedback, with feedback will control x2, this is a cycle. So x1 will control x0, x2 will control x1 and uh, this x0 with all feedbacks and all will connect x2. So this is how your matrix, so this one will go this way and this last bit will depend on what? It will depend on this one xor with this one because this is not involved in this one. So one xor 0 is nothing but a 1. So this one you are going to get by XORing uh, this X0 with X2. So if you XOR this guy and this guy you are going to get a 1. So this is how the next pattern is generated. So what is the next pattern now? So the next pattern is 0, next pattern is now 0, 0, 0 and it is a 1 over here now. So now what is the next pattern over here? You know that this one will control this one, X2 will control this one, this is the case. And now how do you determine X2? It will depend on the XOR of 0 and XOR of 1 which is again nothing but a 1. So this is how you get 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. So in now you are going, to be going getting as uh, 0, 1 and a 1, correct? So now again this will be the case and now this last bit is again depending on 1, this one XOR 0, so this is a 1. So now we are going to get a 1, 0, 0. So it is a uh, 1 then x1 is 1 and this is a 0. So similarly, you can find out the next pattern will be something like this. So 0 x or 0 is 0 something like this. This is how this pattern will go on. And what you can find if you can study that uh, just if you by go by this whatever I did. So if you can go through, you will find out that after 0 0 1 that is what x0 is 0, x1 is 1 and this is 1. So you will get a repetition. Obviously, the repetition has to be there. This is there this one is going to there, this one is going to there and 1 x or 0 is a 0, uh, 1 x or 1 is a 1 sorry, so you get a 1, 0, 0, 1 and sorry, uh, 0, 0, 1 next, sorry, sorry, sorry. You are seeing going to just see what is after that, so it is uh, x1 is x0 is 0, x0 is 1 after this pattern what will be the case and this is 1. So you know that it will be a 0 over here, it will be a So what is the next pattern? We are just trying to compute what is the next pattern after 0, 0, 1. So x0 is 0, uh, x1 is a 0 and x2 is a 1 over here. So what is the next pattern of this one? So you know that uh, x1 will determine this one is 0, so it will be 0 over here. Then uh, what is the next pattern over here? So um, this is the case and this next pattern will be, this will be a 1 over here and 
this one you can determine 0 and 1 x this x or with this one is again a 1. So, it is and you will get again a 1 over here. So, you can see that this pattern is repeated. So, that is what I am saying. So, then again this pattern will be there and there will be lot of repetitions over there. So, what is the next uh, 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 the main emphasis was that that if you start with this this one. So, what is going to happen is that you are going to get all these patterns and after that there is another pattern which is actually repeated. So, that means what it it has in this case it has generated 7 pattern this is an exhaustive case. So, this polynomial as you already know that this pattern was an exhaustive pattern. So, exhaustive I mean what you can say that this polynomial was a I mean what you can call exhaustive polynomial kind of this characteristic polynomial was such it will generate an exhaustive set of patterns. So, it has generated all the 7 patterns starting from this set and after that there is a repetition 0 1 1 you can see that there is a repetition over this. So, that means what it, it based on this seed it will generate this pattern and then another pattern will start occurring. So, that is after generating exhaustive pattern one more pattern is repeating. So, in this this expression was what you can call is an exhaustive uh, polynomial. So, it generates all the patterns possible. So, you can accordingly you can decide on the seed and then you find that the all your important patterns were up to here and after that you can reset. So, basically what we have achieved we have achieved say or you can also think that my important patterns are here. So, you can st then start with this one as a seed and go about this way. Okay. In the very bad situation or you can say that in the worst situation you can have something like, so this is an important pattern, this is an important pattern, this is an important pattern and so forth. Okay. Then you have to start with another seed and see how you can achieve these patterns in a better way. So, that more, more on that we will see in the next class, but today what was the main idea was that to show that that just by using one XOR gate and ch changing the values of I mean H1, H2 and H3 and so whatever. So, you can generate exhaustive set of patterns. So, area requirement is only one extra XOR gate and by depending on this seed. So, if you start with this seed we can if you start with this one. So, this will be the pattern then that will also we can see. So, you can try with different starting seeds and your patterns will be different, but again you will cycle over the exhaustive set that is very important that it will go around this uh, all the exhaustive patterns. But say that if you this set of patterns are important for you they are um, excluding this one and so forth. So, you start with this seed. So, very quickly you will get this coverage important set of test patterns and you can stop and go around with this. Similarly, if you have some other important I mean say your test pattern important is this one. Okay, So, this one here is also a repetition you can see there is a repetition over here. So, up to this only there is this thing after that it repeats. Okay, So, after this 1 0 0 there is a, this one is a was a repetition. So, after that again if you apply you will get uh, we got another repetition was 0 1 1. So, you, you start repeating from this end. So, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7. So, after 7 there is a repetition. So, this guy also 1 0 0 this is 1 0 0 these are the repetition. So, after 7 it will always there will be always a repetition that you can easily see. So, this is the only exhaustive part. This part is your 7 elements 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7. After that it gets repeat and you can say dot 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 it will be repeating. So, after this one we saw what was the pattern it was 0, 1, 1 this was the pattern we already saw and it will be repeating. So, this whole guy will be again repeating that already we have checked and this one we have seen from here. So, again this will be a repeating nature. So, this is the block of this one. So, depending on whatever is your important set whether your important set lies over here or important set lies over here you can choose the seed accordingly and you can do it. So, another advantage is by choosing the seed properly and properly uh, there is characteristic polynomial you can use the small area over it pattern generator to generate the pattern of importance. But if you want to do it in a deterministic way that is I need a circuit which will generate only these three and not any other then you will be in a big problem because you have to go for a finite state machine design of the digital electronics fundamentals. So, you will have to optimize the number of gates and all. So, it will be much larger than a single XOR gate. So, we do not have that a that much area flexibility or that much area overhead capability in this. So, we have to go by this approach. We will go for a linear feedback slip register and then by choosing the prop seed properly wherever is our important seed important test patterns are there we choose the seed accordingly and we do our job. But in the world, but it is not the golden in life is not as green as this sometimes we may have patterns like this 1 1 gap then what is the case then what they then we are at a loss then what is the idea then I mean every alternative test patterns are not of use to us. So, we have to go around your know, test time will be larger, but if you could have designed a circuit which would only generate this test pattern the area would have been larger, but you could have done your testing best faster, but anyway we do not have that area flexibility. But then what is the solution sometimes you can find out some characteristic polynomial and some seed so that it will generate only these patterns or maybe one or two more than that, but you always cannot guarantee, but there is also that is also may be possible which you are not looking at in this course in depth, but that also you can do as an offline study. 
but here you have to but what was emphasizing that you have to understand that we are generating all the exhaustive patterns and based on this heat we can generate the important patterns first and using a very very less area over it that is only one xrb so this was about the lfsr and what is the importance in pattern generation that is random pattern generation and area this one okay so only all zeros cannot be generated so that is very obvious you can find out that if i put all zeros then what is the case so all zeros then this one is 0 x or 0 is again 0 so this thing will keep on generating 0 it will cannot generate anything else so all zeros is not not allowed so this is not allowed generate okay now you just think that if the, these are three input patterns now if we think that the inputs are 1000 in this circuit so, if you have to generate an exhaustive pattern like this, so in, in your uh, beast you require 1000 flip flops and some in the worst case 1000 XOR gates or even less than that. But if you want to generate a counter or a pattern generator that is a deterministic pattern generator like a digital circuit finite state machine design which is having 1000 flip bits, then its area overhead will be extremely high because for each of the inputs of this flops you have to generate different combinational circuits which will generate the particular patterns there will be optimization and there will be at least few gates for each of the inputs of the flip flops which will be very high in number but in this case we require only a few number of xor gates to do this so with this we stop our lecture for this day and in the next class on this module we are going to see another type of that is standard lfsr was there so we will see uh, the next type of lfsr and its impact that is called the modular LFSR. So, what is the advantage and what is the disadvantage and then we will also see about the res response compaction that why we require a response compaction what is the advantage. So, that will be covering in the next lecture which will complete our discussion on this. Thank you.